Dear listener, welcome to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. We are so much delighted that you could join us yet again on this brand new show. Starting us off today is none other than Susan Apodi, as she'll be telling us more about communication problems in relationships during the family life segment. Immediately after Susan, Pastor Lee Kimani will be inspiring us on God's Word based on a topic entitled, Reach Out and Touch. For now, here is a song, Take Time to Be Holy by Nathaniel Nagol. Keep it the voice of hope. Most of the couples in relationships always have problems when communicating. This kind of problem is not new to most of us. Let us now listen to Susan Apondi for her to give us some advice on how we can be able to solve such kind of issues. Be enlightened. (laughs) 
In our family program today, we shall talk about communication problems in a relationship. Is your relationship in a mess? This may be because of lack of communication. Also, it may be because we do not give our partners time to express themselves. It can also be due to the mixing of money in our relationship. As partners or couples, you experience problems in your relationships due to lack of communication. But today, we will try to solve this problem and tip on how to avoid money communication problems in relationships. Before we start the program, I would like you to invite your partner so that you can both benefit from today's topic. Because of the sensitivity of this topic, it's good that you prepare enough to avoid interruption in between the program. I am Susan Apondi. Intimate relationship offers solace, nurturing, support, happiness and fun. Sometimes they originate distress, frustration and deep despair. Stress on most relationships can be placed by the normal times of highs and lows in attraction, energy and enthusiasm. However, we have limited control over these areas. Many problems come from factors such as job and financial pressures or aims and desires being different between people. There are some areas in which changes can be made. This can re-energize relationship satisfaction and open the way for renewed growth instead of being locked into communication problems in your relationships. Poor communication creates problems in relationships. The way we talk or don't talk to one another causes lots of distress and tensions. When one partner has a demand or intrusive communication style, the other partner pulls away or will not communicate in return. This leads to poor communication in your relationship. Poor communication is also when you attempt to influence your partner with your negativity as in anger and sadness. When you personally make accusations to your partner such as putting him or her down with criticism such as laziness instead of explaining that it is a behavior rather than the person that concerned you. Communication breakdown is also as a result of you not showing any concern or emphatic understanding. This is through physical or emotional response to your partner. Get rid of distractions like TV or radio sounds and make a time to talk that is agreeable to both of you. Do not interrupt your partner mid-sentence or talk over them. If you are concerned or feel hurt by the conversation, try to summarize what you have heard to see if what you heard was accurate. Don't label your partner. Keep your attention on his or her actions, not the person. Personalized attacks will not improve the situation. Speaking about specific instances of behaviors gives opportunities for changes to be made. Try to communicate in an encouraging and positive manner, which shows you are supporting rather than putting them down. Always discuss the good aspect about your relationships. Do not focus on the poor communication in the relationship. Common responses for poor problem solving are failing to see the cause of the problem. You may be concluding your partner's recent lack of interest. This means you are losing his or her love for you. In reality, this may be untrue. Poor problem solving is because of having a quick fix solution which misses the mark. You may be thinking that a vacation will be a quick fix solution rather than seeing that small changes in your daily life may make all the difference. Another problem is trying to fix the problem without your partner. Failing to work out solutions together can bring about blame for each other when things seem to be falling apart. To get out of poor communication in relationships, you need problem-solving skills. They include to factor down bigger problems into smaller ones and then work on each one individually. This slices up those big issues, making them less overwhelming and more manageable. Also looking at all possibilities in your options and strategies before selecting a solution. 
often the least turns out to be the most useful. Keep involving your partners as both of you need to experience a sense of shared ownership in what you are doing. Don't forget to ask each other for ideas and views and get regular feedback. If you do this, you will get rid of poor communication in your relationships. Always concentrate on the true and keep learning from each experience. Always be aware of what you did and when success is a bit harder. See what adjustment you need to make next time. Lastly, listener, we look at tips to avoid money communication problem in your relationship. When couples decide to take the step of internal commitment, they are ready to embrace each other, outstanding qualities, and accept any less than ideal traits. However, before walking down the aisle, you need to be armed with tactics to handle any communication problems in your relationship. To do this, couples need to discuss how they will be spending their money as husband and wife. Money affects romantic relationships. Too often in relationships, money is an emotionally charged subject that causes sparks to fly. Honest communication can keep your relationship from becoming another statistic caused by unnecessary communication problems. Communicate about your current situation. This includes telling your spouse about any debt or credit problems that you may bring to the relationship. While this may be a hard thing to do, being honest now may prevent communication problems. Discuss financial priorities on how you would like to spend your money in the future. Think about the large and unnecessary costs such as new house and educational savings. Also, it is important to discuss the cost of recurrent leisure activities such as weekend entertainment and hobbies. Such discussions will minimize communication problems in your relationship. Discuss financial goals. Write your individual short-term and long-term financial goals. Then share the goals with your partner and discuss their similarities and differences. Remember that you and your partner are headed in different directions. Neither one of you will get there. And the communication problem in your relationships will be immense. Plan to share financial responsibilities. Both of you must be aware of the overall financial situation. Plan monthly meetings to discuss your financial and up and keep files regarding your investments, account and accessible. Make all significant financial decisions together to avoid necessary communication problems in your relationship. Understand your individual rights and responsibilities. Learn about your individual privileges and liabilities to help minimize communication problems. This could provide future financial security in a time of need. Listener, we are coming to the end of our program. Bear in mind that the most important money move you might make for your relationship is to impress your differences. Understand that you cannot change the feeling created by a lifetime of experience. Try to cultivate the true aspects of each of your styles. There is no one right to handle your finances. A marriage of your money styles may be perfect solution. Until next time, I am Susan Apondi. I believe you have learned something from Susan Apondi on how we can overcome communication problems in our relationships. If you wish to drop in your comments or suggestions, you can always write to us on Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Or you can send us an email on awrnairobi at eku.adventist.org. As we wait for Pastor Liki money to get prepared, let us listen to a song, Hiding in Thee by Nathaniel Nagol. Keep it the voice of hope. Oh. 
One can reach out and touch by proclaiming the word of God to those who do not know or have not heard about him. This is also one way that one can minister to people. For now, let us invite Pastor Lee Kimani to give us a sermonette on the topic, Reach Out and Touch. Be blessed. Hello, my friend. I pray that God continues to bless you. There are times that we need to exercise a lot of faith as we live from day to day. Today I would like to share with you from the book of Mark, beginning Mark chapter 5, beginning with verse 27. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in a crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see people crowding against you. His disciples answered, And yet you, uh, you can ask, Who touched me? You see the story of the woman who had been suffering with the issue of blood for about 12 years. It's a story of faith. She had heard about Jesus. That's how Mark begins the story. Mark portrays Jesus as a man who has power, a man who is able to calm storms, a man who is able to uh, cast out demons, a man who is able to calm the storms of life. And so we have this woman. Jesus is on his way to heal another daughter, Jairus' daughter. And on the way, this woman had heard about Jesus. She had gone to many doctors. She had tried everything in her life, and yet nothing seemed to work. And because of that, she had come to a point where she was despairing. But she heard about Jesus. And I wonder today, what have you heard about Jesus? What can he do for your life? The Bible says that when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him and touched the hem of his garment. There were a lot of people around him. There were people that were surrounding him. His disciples were around him. And everybody was crowding and touching him. But there was something significant about this touch. And this is the touch of faith that I would like to introduce to you today. You know, when she came, she didn't think that the healing would come as quickly. But she had faith in her heart that if I just touch him, I will be whole. What made the difference? Because today Jesus is still walking this passage of earth. Today Jesus still sees us and still feels our pain. Today you may be asking the question, how can I have victory over my undesirable undesirable habits? Jesus tells you today, behold, I stand at the door and knock. You will be victorious if you will allow Jesus to enter into your space and to your life. This woman, as she came, 
she came with faith. And that's what I wanted to share with you for just this few moments. You see, an act of faith can make a person well. Faith opens doors to the power of God. Faith transfers divine power to those who are utterly powerless. This woman was completely powerless. She had gone to every doctor, every hospital. No one could be able to heal her disease. But she had faith. And so she came and she touched the hem of his garment. So faith transfers divine power to all those who are atlas. I don't know where you are today. But if you feel that you need to touch the hand of God, today you can stretch it by faith. You see, faith saves. Your faith has healed you. That's what Jesus says. For faith to be effective, it must be direct. It must be rightly directly towards Jesus and to God. The next thing about faith, faith shows persistence in overcoming any obstacles. The woman works her way through the crowd. She overcomes the sense of shame she might have had. She overcomes the sense of fear, that uh, the fear of contaminating Jesus and others by reaching out and touching him. Faith shows persistence in overcoming any obstacles. Have you been in prayer lately? Have you been waiting on God? Have you felt that he is not answering? Today I want to encourage you to reach out and touch by faith. Faith steps forward in the midst of intimidating crowds. There's a lot of things crowding your life today. And if you feel that you are being intimidated, step out by faith. The next thing about faith is that faith is embodied in action. Faith is something that can be seen. Faith kneels. Faith begs. Faith reaches out and touch. We must believe that Jesus has the power to touch and heal our issues. Faith is impelled by desperation that Jesus is sufficient to meet whatever need we have. Faith forces its way to Jesus, confident that it will provide healing. Come to Jesus by faith, even if you are shy, ashamed, guilty, or afraid. Well, my friend, I know some of you are staring through the shattered windows of your life. Your dreams have been shattered. There is pain in your life only you and God understand. People look at your past and they are ashamed of you. Your struggles sometimes are hard to bear. I came to tell you don't give up. Reach out and touch the hem of his garment. I know many may have, may have been disappointed in you. Reach out and touch Jesus today. Do you want healing? Reach out and touch the hem of his garment. When the mortgage company forecloses your house or you can't pay your rent, the house you have labored for for so long, reach out and touch the hem of his garment and the Lord will guide and govern your life. When doctors have given up on you and there is no one else that can help your medical condition, today I want to encourage you to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. We may not be able to pay your rent. We may not be able to catch up your mortgage or spare you from un the unemployment line. But we have a doctor who has medicine on the hem of his garment. My friend today, I came to encourage you to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Do you want your issues to be gone? Let Jesus embrace you in his arms. Let Jesus catch you. Let Jesus guide you. Let Jesus govern you. And let him strengthen you. Psalm 120 and verse 1 says, I call on the Lord in my distress and he answers you. He answers me. I adjure you today in the name of Jesus to accept deliverance in your life. Here I ask you today, come because if you confess your sins, if you confess your sins, God will faithfully forgive you and cleanse you. You see, my friend, God is gracious. God is compassionate. God is generous and God loves pity. God is long-suffering. God suffers with us. God is patient. God is slow to anger and God is abounding in love.
You see, God relents from sending calamities. God will do anything possible today to save you. God will suffer with us. God will walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. God will stay by your side when you are on your sickbed. God will comfort you when you grieve. God will wipe away your tears when no one else understands your pain. God will carry your burdens when the Lord is too heavy. When you have pain deep inside and you cannot tell anyone, God understands and God cares because he loves you. So today I would just encourage you to stretch forth your hand and touch his hand. When you reach out and touch, Jesus will break your shackles. Reach out and touch. When you invite Jesus to take control of your issues, Jesus will take your issues. Bring them as they are. You cannot solve them. You've tried that many times over. You tried it the last time and you failed. But today, I want to encourage you to reach out and touch. My friend, I want you to know today, Christ is on the way. He loves you and he cares for you. And he wants you to enjoy life to the fullest. He has come to break your shackles. Won't you invite him to your life? I know that some of you stand at the crossroads today. I know that you are at the crossroads. Jesus Christ has come to your crossroads. He wants to walk with you. He wants to bless you. He wants to save you. Reach out and touch and he will break the chains that he been shackled you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may he continue to give you power to overcome and be his child. May God be with you. That was indeed a very touching message from the man of God himself, Pastor Lee Kimani. For suggestions or comments concerning this program, you can always write to us through our postal address, which is Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Or our email, which is awrnairobi at eku.adventist.org. On behalf of the entire New Life production team and those who work to ensure this program has reached you, we appreciate very much. I have been your host, Tileno Diambo. Take time to be whole.